attention, please? I'm going to ask you just one time to break this up and go about your business. We're not putting on an entertainment here. Oh, I'll bring Bristol Toby out, Sheriff. Sure. Let's have a look at the killer. Fanny Williams, now look here. This man is not a killer until he's been convicted, and this trial has only started. Judge and jury gone to lunch. Come on, fetch him out. We'll help you walk him to jail. <laughs> Give them wings, Sheriff, and they'll make a fine bunch of vultures, won't they? And if we'd take you to jail, we'd just be leading a parade. Gibson, better put him in the cell in the basement. I'll have some food sent in. Here you are, Mr. Cartwright. Volume one, Yankee Meadows. Thank you, Kelly. It's just what I need. This courthouse is built over the Golconda mine. I sure hope they don't intend to do much blasting below us. I thought they weren't supposed to blast near the surface. Well, they're not. Well, it's just a bigger one than usual. Well, thank you, Kelly. I'm glad that's over. Yeah. Kelly! Happy birthday, darling. And a surprise. A picnic basket prepared by the chef of Nevada Club, chicken and wine. And I've, uh, I've made a special reservation for the Willow Grove, back of the opera house. Oh, I'm delighted. But I thought you had to be on the witness stand. I was, but I've been dismissed. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, Jonathan Pike, my fiancé. Yes, of course. We've met before. Yes, we have. How are you? Well, I'm not at my best. It's not very pleasant to sit there knowing that your testimony is going to put a rope around a man's neck, even though it's richly deserved. Well, it's nice to see you again. Johnny, Bristol Toby did kill Mr. Wilderson. Yes, I know, but it's... It's all over now, and I can think of better things to talk about. Mr. Cartwright, will you be all right? Yes, I'm fine, thank you. Doing? Putting him in that cell there, sir. Come on, step lock, Liar! Mr. Kirkland, hold it! They haven't hold me yet! Johnny, did he hurt you? No, he didn't touch me. Thanks, Mr. Cartwright. Now, if you behave, I'll take those cuffs off so you can eat. Right there. Come on, get this up. Come on. 
is he dead? Lift this up, he's bad hurt. Come on now. Let me out and I'll give you a hand. You're not going to make it. I know what to do. Let me out. Oh, wait. Get him. Can let him out. You can't, Mr. Cartwright. He's a murderer. Mr. Cartwright! I'm not to make a mistake! I need something for the lever. You would have done it if you'd have been underground for ten years. All right. Peacock, put your weight on this. Come on. Put your weight on it. All right. Now. Push. Down. Get down. Now. Down. Push, Peacock. Push. Lift it. Push down. Okay, Sammy? Mrs. Connor, she was in the county clerk's office. But Doc Hill's going to take care of the injured in the saloon just up the street. I think that's a lot. Well, did you go into the basement? No. Well, I know that there's my deputy down there and his prisoner and the lady that's taking care of the records. And whoever else might be down there. Get down there and check, will you, please? Please stand back, folks, please. You can give me a hand, will you? Yeah, I'll be glad to give you a hand. Not you. You're not in good condition. All right? Walk her right around and we'll block this porch off. She's got a broken arm, Doc. Bring her right over here. How many more are trapped down in there? Oh, I don't know. I heard it cave in and just started running. Uh, easy. Uh, easy. Uh, Hoss. Uh, Hoss. Cut right. I gotta tell him. Tell him what? I gotta talk to him. <laughs> you better get Hoss caught right over here right away. Right, Doc. Get a blanket. That's out. He's something to put under his head. Oh, good. Good. Logan, you all tied off? No, Roy. Old mine shafts down there must be caving in. That whole floor seems like it's sinking, don't it, Bob? Bad. Bob, go see if you can find Arch Tremaine. You know, Galconda superintendent, and get him over here fast. He really understands about these cave ins, and we need all the expert help we can get. Right. Oh! Oh! Mrs. Connors wants to talk to you. It must be important. Doc said come right away. Fine, I'll tell you something you can do for me. Right out and get Candy and little Joe for me, will you? Sure, Oss.
food's not your property. Keep your hands off it. Ain't the condemned man entitled to a hearty meal? Take it easy on it. We may need it later. We could be here a long time. They may never come. Eat up. Hey, Peacock. Why are you trying so hard to have me hung? I told the truth about you. And you're a liar. Now, shut up, both of you. If you say so. Is it getting hard to breathe in here? Or am I imagining it? A little. It'd help if we uh, turned out some of the lamps. It's a good idea. Let's put them all out. I'll accept that one. The one back there. Major cave ends in this stove here between the 100 200 foot level. It's almost directly under the courthouse. Main, what about the basement? There's four people down there. Well, there's bound to have been a lot of slippage in through here. Those vault walls may have held, they may not have. Any survivors down there, we won't know till we get down there, and that's going to take a while. Well, why are we after it? I mean, what are we doing just standing around here? Well, I know how you feel, Hoss. If my paw's down there, I'd be raising cane, too. Paw's down there. Paul and three others down there. Oh, aren't you over there getting them out? Well, we're going to, Joe. We've got to go about this careful. I'll tell you what I need. I need five or six good men to work with me in the courthouse. And the rest of you would be more help if you'd help stack that wreckage out in the street. Well, you got three right here. Well, fine. How about you, Charlie Rutledge? You bet. again, I might be able to use that Irish luck of yours. Yeah, and me, Barry Williams, ready for duty. Hogan, you'll do. All right, that ought to be enough for now. Let's get going. Well, so I'll tell him. I can, I can help. Not now, Benny. You're in no condition. No, no, but I never stick a stone in there. The air's bound to get a bit stale down here. Well, you'll have us out of here in no time. What if they don't realize we're alive? Then they'd have no reason to hurry, and it could take Dr. them Callie, days. They're not going to assume that we're dead. They'll get us out of here. Oh, well, we can't be sure. Okay, what? Okay, okay. Okay, darling, don't worry. What Mr. Cartwright says. Shh. Hey, darling, don't worry. They can't help but hear that. We'll be out of here in a few hours. If nothing stops that clock. Oh, 
boss. I just said you didn't work in there anymore. We don't know how strong that floor is. Right. Paul? Listen to me, Joe. Come away from that stairwell. We've got to clear this wreckage out of the center of the room. Otherwise, the whole thing's going to cave in and kill everybody down there. Now, listen to me, all of you. This wreckage here in the center of the room is dead weight hanging over that basement vault. Now, the support beams may already be gone, or it may just be holding by a hair's breadth. We cannot put any more weight on the center of this room. We've got to clear out this wreckage first, then we'll get to the stairwell. You all got that? What do we do now? Like I said, we clear out the center of the room first, then we get to the stairwell. Now hop to it, but walk like you're walking on eggs. beams under the section may be gone, so take it easy. Rest you men form a chain and get this wreckage out the street. Certainly timbering a fire in the mine. Better move the death. Give me that. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, leave the blanket. Yeah. Easy. Easy. Pull up, pull up. Miss Kelly, tear that blanket into strip. That's a good lass. It might even keep us off from choking to death on the smoke. Finish here. You'd make a better signal man than the one we've got, right? Things have come out even. <coughs> oh, it's so hard to breathe. Is he really that bad? It'd be easier if you breathe shallow. Don't try to move too much, all right? You fools, they must all be deaf. Joe Morrissey. Come on, let's get him out of here.
See if they know Morris. Come to be careful. Johnny, what's he saying? I don't know. Mr. Cartwright, can you make it out? My sailing days, I could make out the Morse code pretty good, but it's too fast for me now. They're asking how many of us are alive down here. county clerk showed up. He'd been over to Carson City. And as near as I can figure out, that leaves seven people still missing. We found five of them. They're alive in the vault. What about Paul? Well, four of them are all right. One of them's bad hurt. They didn't say which one. Sheriff, those people need air, and they need it bad. We've got to get that compressor over here from Gal Condon. Get the compressor and the pipe and some line in there. Since I can't work in the courthouse, that sounds like a good job for me if somebody would show me where it is. There's something else we need, Sheriff. We need some thin iron rod. We're going to have to punch a hole through that wreckage so we can get an airline down there to them. Blacksmith shop. That's the best place for that. Well, yeah. let's get going. Hey, Clint, Ross left the team and why can go with Hoss here. Mr. Cartwright, he's having trouble breathing. I don't know whether it's the air or, or if he's worse. Get, get, get one of those ledges put it under his head. be an hour before they can start to pump any air. Tell them it's got to be sooner. We won't last. Air's not that bad. It's thick and it stinks, but I've worked in mind where it's been worse, Peacock. Don't call me Peacock. I'll call you anything I like. And I'll tell you something else. I'm going to make you admit you lied on the witness stand, even if I have to tell you Alan from Lynn. Do you understand me, Peacock? Don't call me that! I'm flat out. Both of you! Trial will be settled up in that courtroom, not down here. If we get out of it alive, it'll we'll be... get out of here alive. They're going to have to come down that stairway. They're going to have to clear the top of that. Come on. See if we can get clear away some of this stuff right here. They want to punch an air hole. They're asking if we're willing to risk it. Yes. Well, let's, let's get some cover right over there. All right, Joe, go ahead. Hey, Todd, come on. Get some of that stuff out. Sledge. Joe! Tap her light. Joe, try her again.
Are you all right? I'm all right. Well, I'll tell you one thing for sure. We're never going to get an airline down through this mess. What do we do now? I don't know. That fluid may not be plugged up all the way. Seems to be the end of it. I hope so. It's not too bad. I've been in worse cavings. Johnny, he's not here. Uh, here I am. Are you all right? Yes. Where were you? Well, a piece of the ceiling fell down, knocked me in there. Mr. Cartwright told you to take cover in here. What were you doing in there? Uh, stop bickering, both of you, will you? Callie, take care of Gibson, will you? All right, let's clear the debris away. This is miners' work. You try and it'll all come down on your heads. Look, you two stack and I'll do the clearing, all right? All right. Careful. Careful. The compressor right over here in the wagon right next to it. Let's hurry up. We only got about a half hour of daylight left. Looks pretty good, Hoss. Yeah, how long it'll be before we can get some air down there to him? I don't know. I'd say at least 15, 20 minutes. alone because I'll bring it all down on top of us. I can move it. I heard you were a timbering man. I was shoring, boss. Best on the Comstock. Spent three years. that warned old Wilderson that the stopes under us here were going to cave in. You know what thanks I got? He fired me. For warning him? Or oh, pinch a penny, Wilderson? He didn't want to spend money on new timbers. And he didn't want me around reminding him that he had to put them in. <laughs> to hear the peacock tell it, I killed Wilderson for firing me. That's a lie, Mr. Cartwright. The truth is, I thanked Wilderson on the spot. I was tired of slaving in a mole hole and only seeing the sun one day a week. I wanted to go back to sea. I was a sailor like you. Aye. A man should be able to see the sun, Mr. Cartwright. Cartwright's the finest man I ever met. I, I've been thinking, what? How can I help you get him out? I know every sick and stone in the building. Look, the most help you can be, Manny, is go somewhere and sleep it off. No, 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 I mean it, Hoss. I know every stick and stone. Right. The other way.
what you've been telling me. As much as they'd let me. Look, I'm as ugly as a wagon load full of sin, and yet the peacock's as pretty as a $20 gold piece. Who would you believe? Jonathan! to kill me. You heard him. Put down the gun. Johnny, please, no! You haven't got the guts to kill a mouse. So you lied for the man that did. Now, who was it? Oh, I had to lie. Who's going to put me in jail? Did you hear that, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, I heard that. Let's shut up that beam. Come on, push it. Come on, up. come on, Eddie. Boss, boss, I'm sober, boss. Look, 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 I've been, I've been soaking my head under the pulse, see? Yeah, yeah, well... Near it, anyhow. Listen, Tremaine won't listen to me, but you got to, boss. I helped build this building, every freaking board. And I helped build the coal chute through the alley wall into the basement. Oh. Penny, they ain't a coal chute in all of Virginia City. Oh, no, don't be so persnickety. A coal chute is a coal chute, even if it's firewood that you chuck down it for the stoves. And I'm telling you, we cut one through the alley wall. You didn't go into the basement. How come Paul ain't found it? I ain't sure. But I think they bricked it over when they put their records down there. Show me. office, Mr. Cartwright, little rotten timbers I was getting. Well, I wasn't the only one. Who forced you to steal? Tremaine. He was stealing, too. Wilderson caught him, so he killed Wilderson. And then he, he forced me to lie to put the blame on Toby. Kelly. You must understand. I... Please understand. No. And I realize, Jonathan, that I have never known you. Message for the sheriff. Yeah. Worst comes to the worst. I don't want murder on my tombstone.
hurry up, will you? Now, you just take it easy. Look, I'm not hurt that bad. Hurry up. I want to get back there. Not hurt that bad. One rib broken and two cracked. I don't suppose you'd listen to reason and not go back to work. That's right. I won't listen to reason. Just hurry up. All right. Go back if you have to, but you be almighty careful. I'll keep an eye on him, Doc. Come on, let's go. Wait just a minute, young fella. You're not going any place till I've had a chance to look at that knee. Well, that's a waste of time. It's not the matter with my knee. Well, Sit down. Let him look at it. There's nothing wrong with that. Come on, come on. Sit down. Come on. All right, all right. I'll be Thanks, right over. All right, Doc, hurry up. The leg's not hurt that bad. Well, let's just take a look. Besides, I was hoping maybe we could keep Joe here with you. Oh, come on, Doc. It didn't work, did it? Candy. You've seen that cave in over there. Yeah. Well, how much longer do you think they're going to be able to survive? We're pumping air in down there now. Are you sure it's getting to them? I just thought it might be a good idea if... somebody else found Joe's paw. <laughs> A few minutes. We you mean you walked off and left this thing out of water and let it blow itself up? All right, all right. How long will it take to fix it? I have the parts half the night. In the meantime, those people down there are going to run out of air and they'll be dead before we can get to them. Thanks to you, mister. Well, there's still a chance. There's a coal chute down in that basement. A coal chute in Virginia City? Huh? Well, I don't believe that. Well, I do. We're going to find it. Come on, Benny. Him how long he's gonna be, and I'm getting no answer. to set this place on fire. We found it. We found it. So we'll cover it up. Steve, but you can make it. Well, Kelly, come on, get up there. No, Gibson first. We'll get Gibson up there. Get up there quickly now. Tell him to send down a rope.
your rope? My rope, right there. Jonathan, you next. Get there. Come on, lad. Do as you're told. Come on. Now up you go. Scramble. Come on, Peacock. Scramble for your life. Up you go. There's a lad. Go on. You want to talk to me, Sheriff? I certainly do. Come on. All right, start pulling up, boss. Easy, fellas, easy. Take it easy. Easy, Adam, now. He's hurt. Don't hurt him. Pull so. You got him, Candy? Kelly. Well, I'll tell you, the whole world just fell apart when Crystal Toby got that confession out of Jonathan. But she was lucky at that. It's a whole lot better for a gal to find out about a man before she marries him than after. Yeah. Yeah, that ankle's really bothering you, isn't it? I don't even remember twisting it when I got out of that cold shoe. Who's that for? Just what the doctor ordered, hot water and Epsom salts. Well, the doctor may have ordered it, but I didn't. Yeah. No, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Paul, that's the only way to treat a sprained ankle. Hot Epsom salts water and no water. Wait, 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 wait. This ankle's not sprained, just twisted, that's all. Just twisted, not sprained. Sure. That's why Joe and I had to carry from the buggy, right? Well, you may have had to carry me, that's true, but it's just a twisted ankle. I don't know. Just because it's twisted doesn't mean I have to have it. Why don't we just take off the slipper and the sock and we'll take a look at it. It's not going to hurt anything. Come on, take it easy. Easy. I'm going to go as easy as I can. Something that isn't too bad, Paul. It sure is hurting. Easy. I'm doing it as easy as I can. All right, take a look at that. Just look at it. It looks pretty bad. It's pretty swollen. Now, the hot water isn't going to hurt it any. All right. Pull that pot right over here. Nice and easy. Well, that's, that's what the doctor said. Hot as you could stand it. I can't stand it. Well, it's gonna be fine. I don't know which is worse. The cure or the illness. I know it hurts, but it's better than being in a cave. At least you won't have to see that place anymore. What was that? Why was that? I was thinking about that. You know, I still need that book of records. That volume one, Yankee Meadows. Well, not right away, you're not. Not with this ankle. Well, that's that's what I was thinking. Since I'm not going to be able to walk for the next two or three days. Yeah, somebody ought to go in there and get it out of the debris. Yeah, sure glad you volunteered. <laughs> I really don't think the ankle's that bad. I mean, it's, it's not a sprain, it's a little twist in it. It's sprained. It's a sprain. It's 
it's, it's brass brain. Yeah, I figured it would be. Kenny, I sure wish I had two months off. Well, if you'd given up your vacation two years running, you'd have a long holiday now, too. Honest, you still haven't told us where you're going. Well, Candy, I can't tell you. Just gonna go, that's all. Go where I want to, when I want to. Joe, Candy, yeah. I'll be thinking about you when I fry that first big pan of fresh cold dry. <laughs> have a good time. Have a good time. Take care. Can I help you? You listen close now, you hear? Howdy, friend, can I help you? Yes, sir. You sure can. Oh, howdy, friend, can I help you? <laughs> yes, sir. I got a list here. Well, it looks like you're planning to do a little fishing. Yes, sir, sure am. It's been a long time. And it'll take me just a minute to get these things together. I got nothing but time. Nothing worth nothing, just some little candles, that's all. Well, here's everything. Comes to a dollar eighty-five cents. Oh. Here. There's a couple. Keep the change. Thank you. And good luck with your fishing. Settle down a minute. You gonna put me in jail? Oh, no, I ain't gonna put you in jail. I, I just wondered what you was doing, that's all. I, I was making a wish. Huh? I was making a wish. You're supposed to light candles to make you a wish and then blow them out. That's why I took damn candles, because I couldn't make no wish without them. Oh, I see. If you ain't gonna put me in the jailhouse, can I get my candles? They ain't hardly used up yet. Yeah, go ahead and get them. You make a lot of wishes? Yes, sir. What do you wish for? I wish my papa was white. out of a jail is not to steal. Yes, sir. But I ain't got no money to pile. Well, one of these days you'll be a big guy, then you can get you a job and earn you some money. Papa's big, and he can't earn no money. Is that your horse? Yeah. Yeah, that's my horse. Sure is a big horse. Well, I need a big horse. That's the biggest horse I ever seen. Sure would like to ride on that horse. Where do you live? Out of ways. Well, it just so happens that I'm going to be riding out of ways. Would you like to take a ride with me? Hey, that'd be fine. Come on, get aboard. Now, since we're going to be riding together, I reckon we ought to get acquainted. I'm horse cart right. 
I asked John O. Davis. John O. Davis. What does that O stand for? I don't know. It's just an O, I think. Well, it's a pleasure meeting you, John O. Davis. Johnny, how much further it is to your place? It's not far now. You're sure a long ways from home for such a little fella. Mom's probably worried to death about you. My mom got dead. Is that a fact? What about your pa? My pa's trying to make the food grow. Well, he's a farmer, huh? He was one time, but nothing seems to grow no more. That's why I wish my papa to be white, so things would go right for him. You figure things would go right for him if he was white, huh? I'm sure they would. Well, how can you be that sure? I know. That's all. Why else would I wish for it? Well, a lot of people wish for things, but... Did you ever wish your pa was black? Tell you about the Ellen boy. You gotta meet my friend. Howdy. What'd you say your name was? Horse guard right. Howdy. Yeah, that's right. This is my papa. Go in the house, boy. But papa. Go on inside. If my boy did something wrong, mister, I'll whip him. I'll whip him good. Oh, no, no, he didn't do nothing wrong. I'm not a runaway. I'm a freed man. I got my papers right here, all legal. They're all there. I swear we ain't done nothing wrong. Mr. Davis, I just brought your little boy home, that's all. Can we come out now? Yeah. This is my brother Jesse and my sister Beth. Howdy, Jesse. Ma'am? My sister's a girl. Yeah, that's the way with sisters. She's a cook. She cooks good. You want to eat supper with us? John. I don't think Mr. Cartwright wants to eat with us. Oh, please. There's a whole mess of greens. John, that's enough. Yes, sir. Mr. Davis, I, I ain't one for turning down good home-cooked meals. Uh, that is, if you got enough. There's a whole mess. Please, Papa. All right. Beth's at another place. I'll unsaddle my horse and be right with you. You want some more, Mr. Cartwright? Yeah, I don't mind if I do. That's pretty tasty. Don't you see the cook? No, you sure right about that, Johnny. Uh, what sort of vegetables are those? I don't know. They grew all around here. On my birthday, we gonna have stew. Ain't that right, Papa? Yeah, that's right, son. If we get some meat. We're gonna get some meat, I told you. Well, how you gonna do it, Papa? You ain't got no powder for that old gun of yours. Oh, you need gunpowder? I got some out there in my saddlebags. That's what you need. We don't need none, thank you. Papa, we need... I said we don't need it. Jesse, Papa said he'd get that meat. Mr. Davis, what sort of farming do you do? Corn and beans. Rain didn't come for a long time. Everything got dead. Well, that's, that's the way of the weather. But then it changes, and when it does, everything grows again. Except that we ain't got nothing to plant. No seed. Now that's enough. Can't the man eat his supper without having to listen to you grieving? Papa, 
You sure look mad tonight. It's nothing, John. I'm sorry, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, that's right. My, my Paul gets upset over things every once in a while himself. Things like what? Jesse. I'm just asking a question, that's all. Well, you know, things like when a job ain't getting done fast enough to suit him, that, that sort of thing upsets him. What's your part do then? Well, he just works harder to make sure the job gets done on time. I see. Then you wouldn't understand why my pa's mad. You see, he's mad because there ain't nothing to work harder at to get done. If my pa had something to work at, then he wouldn't have no need to get mad. What about work in town? Papa's never even been there. I tried, but I couldn't get none. And Papa, he don't even know I tried. See, he don't want us to go to town either. How come? He never do say why. He just says he knows what's right, that's all. Why do you suppose he don't go to town? He don't go to town because he's scared of white folks. Papa's afraid, like Jesse says? No. If he is, it makes my wish that much better a wish. How do you mean? Because he wouldn't have to be as scared of white folks if he was white folks. You see? Yeah. Yeah, I, I see you, John. Look, I, uh, I better be running along. Hoss, don't go yet. I want to show you something. Please? It'll only take a minute. All right. Just a minute, but then I got to thank you, Paul, and then be on the way. Well, come on, then. Beth, thank you for the supper. I'm just glad you liked it. We ain't never had nobody over here for supper before. And it was nice. Yes, it was. Thank you. Come on, Hoss, hurry up. Hey, John, where are you taking me? I'll show you. It's not far. Right through the trees here. wishing place. Sometimes I wish other places, but mostly I wish here. Well, I must say you picked a mighty pretty place. I know, but I ain't had much luck with my wishes. Well, John, you can't expect all your wishes to come true, you know. I know that. I just wanted one to come true, and I think it has. Oh? Yes, sir. See, when I wished today, the first thing I seen was you. Now, John, you didn't wish for me. I's not so sure. Maybe my wish was too hard for the Lord. So he sent me you to help my papa. Well, it was a pretty hard wish, all right. That's what I was thinking. So the Lord must have sent me you. Well, look, John, I... You can't help him, can't you? Well, John, even if I could, I, I'm not for sure that your pa had let me. Why not? Well, he just doesn't seem to be the kind of man that would look kindly on charity. What's that? Charity? Oh, it's, well, it's sort of like... Well, like when you give something to somebody for nothing. You know, to help them. There don't seem to be nothing wrong with that. Well, I, I didn't say there's anything wrong with it, John. It's it's just that... I, I just don't think it worked. I'm sorry. Don't have no luck with any wishes.
Davis. I hate to bother you again, but... Well, while I was out there saddling my horse, I got to thinking on something, and I'd like to discuss it with you if I could. Sir? Thank you. This is... This is the thing I've been thinking about. See, where I come from, we got a lot of good farmland, but it ain't in use because ain't nobody knows anything about farming. We're all cattle people, you see. And, well, it so happens at the moment I got a lot of free time on my hands, and I thought maybe if, if I could learn me some farming, I could kind of surprise folks by going back there and putting all that land to use. You, you know what I mean? No, Mr. Cartwright, I'm afraid I don't. Well, what I'm trying to say is, you see, I got the wherewithal, and you got the know-how. And I thought maybe we could sort of, sort of team up, you know, just team up. You mean you want to work this farm with me? Yes, sir, I, I reckon that's about it. Why? Well, I, I just told you. It don't make sense. Why not? Well, you're a white man. Well, a white man be a good farmer, can't he? Yes, I guess so. How about it? Mr. Cartwright, we don't believe in charity. Oh, you won't have to worry about that. I'll do my share of the work, I'll guarantee you. There's a lot you can teach, Mr. Cartwright, Papa. You're the best farm I ever did see. Behind you can grow a chicken. All right, all right. I sure do hope we grow a chicken. John, how come you do that? I'm sorry, Papa. <laughs> I think I've worked harder the last two weeks than I have the past two years. There's no easy thing getting a farm going. Once you do, it's a beautiful sight to see things growing. Something mighty fine about green things growing. Yeah, you must love it, the way you work at it. I've been farming since I was no high in John. Though. Some boy, ain't he? I declare, he loves them chickens just like they was chilling. Hey, John! Don't feed them so much. Them's chickens, not turkeys. They look hungry. Chickens always look hungry. You just watch that feed, and that's enough. Go and help your sister. Yes, sir. Papa says that's all you can have. How old is he? He's seven. He was born when we, uh... Was moving west. I couldn't have decided to move west anyhow, Sam. Land. Chance to work my own land. I saved enough money to buy me and my family's freedom. When I did, we upped and moved. How long did you work as a slave, Sam? Forty years. This old plow will be ready by now. Tomorrow that far field will be ready for planting. As soon as I get through here, I'll be out there to help you. There ain't no need for that. I can do that myself. No. Nope. I said I was going to do my share of the work, and I'm going to do it. That's right. But, uh, I was kind of thinking of asking you to do something else. Well, sure. Like what? It's your boy John's birthday. And I was wondering if you could do something about some venison or something. That is, if you don't mind. I do mind, Sam. I came here to learn farming, not to go hunting. Yeah, that's right. Sam, if you want venison, you'll have to go get it yourself. Let me have this plow, and I'll finish this job here and get my rifle in the house and their shells in my saddlebag. Go on. You're the one who promised that boy, not me. That's right, I did. Get with it.
Yes, sir, you keep working. I'll be back soon. Where you going, Pa? Get me some venison, boy. Get me some venison. My stomach's so full, I'm gonna blow up. Well, it ought to be full. You ate more than I did, and that's saying some. If I eat like that all the time, will I get as fat as you? <laughs> John, Mr. Cartwright ain't fat. Well, now, Sam, if I ain't fat, what am I? Well, you big. Yeah, I'm big, but I'm also fat. Papa, this was the best dinner I ever did eat. Thank you, Papa. I think you ought to thank Mr. Cartwright. It was his gun. Yeah, but it was you that shot it. That's right. And Beth cooked it. Ain't no need to thank me. I think we ought to thank the Lord. That's a good idea, son. Dear Lord, we also all so busy thanking each other, we almost forgot to thank you. Lord, we don't talk to you as much as we ought to. Sometimes we forget. And when we do, we're so busy asking you for things, we forget to thank you for what you give us. So, Lord, we just want to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. 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 She's learned, did you? Well, I have my doubts about it. <laughs> well, birds are pretty smart. Smarter than some people. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of smart birds, we got a few out there on the farm. They laid us some pretty eggs. Good, good. Say, don't I know you? Yes, sir. I think so. Let's have a look at those eggs before they hatch. We'll get them. Sir. Well, what do we got here? Let me carry him. Let me carry him. What you got there, boy? Eggs. Our chickens give them. Oh, that's nice. Can I look at them? Well, what do you think of these eggs, Mr. Johnson? Nigger food, that's why. All right, you give them eggs back to my brother. We gotta sell them eggs. Well, now, 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 take it easy. Now, you might make me nervous, and now I drop all these eggs. Give me the door. Yeah. Don't you try and grab nothing from me, nigger boy. Mr. Johnson, how far do you figure you can throw a, an egg? Well, let's go find out. Continue this, mister. You better have yourself a good doctor. What's this all about, Jesse? They said they didn't like no nigger food. Is that a fact? According to Mr. Titus, those eggs are worth 50 cents a dozen. How many eggs in that box? Four dozen. You owe this man two dollars for pay. You're making a mistake, sticking up with the likes of them. I said you owe this man two dollars. Pay him. Jess, get John, get in the wagon. See you in a minute.
You boys could have saved yourself a lot of trouble. The hens that laid them eggs are white. We're going to see them again, Mr. Johnson. We are going to see them again. You should have been there, Papa. Horse hit that man so hard that I thought his whole head gonna come off. The other man didn't even say nothing. Yeah, he broke all them eggs, too. But Horse made him pay. He sure did. How much is that? Is that a lot of money? Yes, son, that is a lot of money. Now, you and Jesse go and get washed up. It's almost time for dinner. Yeah, I'm hungry. Is you all right, Papa? Yes, yeah, son, I'm all right. Go and get washed up. You should have been there. Unhitched the mules and watered them. I reckon the boys told you what happened in town, huh? They told me. Well, it's over and done with. It won't happen again. I think it's going up the far field. You're wrong, Hoss. Mm -hmm. You're wrong. About what? Them men. They'll be back. What makes you say that? I know them. You've had trouble with them too before, huh? Not them, but others just like them. They're the same everywhere. Just like they're from the same seed. They think alike, they act alike. They'll be back. So I didn't want my boys to go in that town. Well, Sam, I, I think you're making a whole lot more out of this than, than there. That's because you don't know. I do. I know. Well, you can't live apart forever. They'd have to go to town sometime. No, they wouldn't. Not if you hadn't come along. We was doing just fine. Maybe their stomachs did hurt a little from being hungry sometimes, but their hearts was fine. You see, right now, they think that most white folks is like you. But they're going to learn. Oh, yes, they're gonna learn. Oh, Sam, no. Wait a minute, you're wrong, Sam. You're wrong about the folks in town. There's some good folks in town. Come in with me. What for? To meet the white folks? To meet the folks. Horse, it's not the same. Just having folks tolerating you and letting you be around is not like belonging and being a part of something. I went into town once when my wife was sick. I went to get her a doctor. He was nice enough to me. But he said he... Didn't doctor no colored folks. She lay on that bed. She died. So you don't have to take me into town, horse. I've been there. the way we found them all, dead. John, he went off crying. What we gonna do? So you still think it's all over, horse? No, but it's gonna be. We go in town and file charges against them, too. What you gonna use for proof? Couldn't have been nobody else but them. Folks in town saw what happened there. They'll testify to that. They ain't gonna testify to nothing. What if they do? So what? You'll just give them a fine, turn them loose. And they'll be back. Next time they won't stop by just killing a few chickens. You gonna let them do get by with that? You, you just ain't gonna do nothing about it? Yeah, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna take what few things we got here and I'm gonna pack that wagon and we're gonna get. Jesse, you get that wagon and start loading. Beth, you help me. Papa, this is our home. We can't leave. Jesse, you load that wagon, boy. You want them to know they scared you off? You want them to know they scared you off? <laughs>
So you're just gonna run, huh? Yes, I'm gonna run. You're the fellow that was telling me how hard you worked to be a free man. How you love the farm and love to put the seeds in the ground and make them grow. You're gonna give all that up, huh? That's right. I thought you was a better man than that, Sam. I'm not just a man, I'm a black man. And don't you go thinking you know how I feel unless you're black, too. I love this farm. But I love my children more. I can plant corn again and make it grow. I can plant beans and make them grow. But I can't make my children grow again if they're dead. And that's why we're moving out of here. understand you're being scared, but there comes a time when a man's got to fight. And they ain't gonna hurt them kids, I promise you that. I ain't gonna let them, I promise you I won't let them. Thank you, boss. Thank you for taking care of old Sam and his children. Oh, Sam, I didn't mean it like that. No, no, you're right, boss. Go ahead and take care of old Sam. Show his boys how the big white man always takes care of Papa. So that when they grow up, they won't forget that it's the white man who is the man. Howdy, boy. What you doing? John's ready to travel yet. John ain't going nowhere. I am. I'm going to town. Go on, boy. Hitch the team. Yes, sir. Beth, you take care of John. Be back soon. Say, you keep out of this. You ain't taking care of me no more.
them two fellas we had trouble with the other day? Yeah, I know them. You got any idea where we can find them? Craig, the big one, owns the livery stable yonder. You could probably find him there. Thanks. Who's there? I said, who's there? I was talking to you, black man. Are you deaf? You whip my boy. Mr. Johnson, it's that boy's uh, happy's come to pay us a visit. Well, ain't that nice. You had no call to whip my boy. Now, that's right. And it ain't the boy's fault he was born. It's your fault. out of this. I will, just so it's even. Now, drop the bottle. You're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble over this. You let me worry about that. Now, get over there. Go on. They're all yours, Sam. some of your friends together and riding out to my place. Because we're not going to be there. We're going to move out just like you want us to. Because you're right. We're not the same, you and me. And I thank the Lord that we're not.
Jesse. Go tell John and Beth you're ready to go. I'm gonna miss this place. But we got some seed and we got the makings of another farm somewhere. If I hadn't come along, you wouldn't even have to be leaving now. No, horse. Ain't your fault. Some people out there, the ones that hate you without even knowing you. Yeah. And them that, that want to help them and don't know how. You did help me, horse. There's some people out there. They think I'm a nigger. Something less than a man. And for the longest time, I believed it. But no more. And no matter what happens to me, my children are going to live. They're going to make out. And they're going to be proud that they're black. Papa, John doesn't want to come out. He doesn't want to say goodbye to Haas. Say goodbye. How come? I don't want to, that's all. Why? Because when you say goodbye, that means you're gone. I don't want you to go up. I want you to stay with us. say goodbye to one another, that, that don't mean they ain't gonna see each other again. You know, a lot of things happen from day to day, and in the meantime, you, you're gonna have to help your pa. He's gonna be starting a new farm, and you and old Jess and Beth are gonna have to help him like, like I gotta help my pa. I'm too little. Oh, you ain't too little. What are you talking about? Wait, look how tall you are. You've grown a bunch since I've been here. Am I growing that fast? You sure are. I'll bet you the next time I see you, you'll you'll be as big as I am. You think so? Sure you will. You better get on and help our pa.
Wait a minute. Come back here. I'm not going to hurt you. Drop the ordinance, boy. Anata. Put both hands on top of your head. Making a mistake, mister. Don't cost near as much as you make it. Now get down off of that horse. Move inside, real gentle like. I'll decide who's making the mistakes. Just what the doctor ordered. You need more than food, Samuel. You have to look a fever. I'm all right now. Don't you worry. Hey, boy, you hungry? Uh, no, 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 thanks. You don't know what you're missing. The naughty here's one fine cook. She's half as good as she is with this rawhide, I believe you. I suppose I could have told her not to wet that rawhide. But that's a Shoshone for you. Thing worth doing is worth doing right. Look, you got to be hungry. Give me your word you won't try nothing while we're eating. I'll have her free your hands so you can try some of this stew. When I'm finished? I'll be finished first. You get any ideas about dessert, that's up to you. You're sure, Samuel? It's all right, then, Nana. Two days of chasing strays, I can appreciate it. Then you work here, this place? Yeah. You're not one who hunts for the bounty? No, nada. We'll need more wood. She speaks good English? Yeah, sometimes just a little too much. She didn't say anything I couldn't read. First off, you're hiding in a Cartwright line shack. Second, that's a McClellan saddle sitting on that barrel out there. Generally, only one kind steals cavalry horse flesh and then rides it so hard it folds under him. If that's true, boy, you know what comes next. 
Yeah, maybe. You're running, all right? And that may be an army bullet in your shoulder. Non-coms don't usually go over there. What did you say, boy? Your boots. They're not standard issue, and yet they're not expensive enough to be an officer's. I say sergeant. Not less than 12 years in grade. Maybe sergeant major. The only thing I can't figure out is, is what outfit you're with. Henry repeaters haven't been issued west of Fort Kearney. Just how far from the flagpole was you born, boy? I'd say just a little bit farther than your desk, Sarge. But not too far to know if you're running, you're going to need help. With no supplies and no horses. I can get them for you. Let me get this straight. You volunteering to help me? Mm -hmm. You're going to have to trust somebody. And uh, that wound's not going to give you too much time to pick and choose. Tell him, Nanada. He speaks the truth. The look of fever is strong. By tonight... By tonight, I'll be back with medicine and all the help you need. No, I got all the help I need right here. Please, Samuel, if he brings no one. No. I'm not giving up, not yet. What do you think you're doing? Let's see, I'm trying to give you a chance to prove one of us is right. You're playing a fool's game, boy. I'll be back by nightfall. I give you my word, I'll be alone. got caught in the north fence. Not enough to trouble a vet, though. The Lord gives them doggies more brains, be a lot less trouble for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Ed, Candy. Hello, sir. Candy, you headed back out to Ben's place? Well, not before morning. I've got to chase some strays. Now, well, that's soon enough to save me a ride out there. Wire just come through from Baker Station. Seems a deserter busted out of their stockade. Figure he headed this way. Oh, yeah? Well, it'll keep an eye out for him. Good. There'd be a cavalry patrol through. Might be the one some help. Since Ben's got the most men, I thought he might help out with a couple if they needed. I'll tell him. All right. Shouldn't take too long. Man alone, this kind of country's got all the chance for the three-legged horse. Yeah. station. Yeah. I'm afraid I'll be putting you to a little trouble the next few days, Mr. Cartwright. Well, how's that, sir? I never like to bivouac my men in a town. Sheriff suggested your place. Of course, we'll pay for any food or staples we require. Well, you're welcome to anything you need, Captain. What brings you to this part of the country? We're after a deserter, Mr. Cartwright. Sheriff said he told your man. Candy, I believe he said. I haven't heard from Candy in three days. Doesn't matter. All we need from you is some food, grain, base of operations. Quite a search your money for just one man. A very dangerous man, Mr. Cartwright. A coward, a thief, a deserter. A murderer. Yes. 
He killed Lieutenant Jameson, one of my best men. We found him shot in the back the night Bellis escaped. I mean to see that he pays for that. better I heard what you said and I'm plenty good enough to work this weapon in case you get any ideas you better off to uh, start on this if you want me to get boot out of your shoulder now, wait a minute boy you think I'm gonna let you put a knife to me you must trust him Samuel he's brought us a horse so you can either ride him out of here or go out tight across him your choice. Get any prizes for dragging your feet. Corporal Henderson? Yes, sir. Then I'm ready to move, sir. Good. Mount up. Are you sure you don't want any of my boys to go along with you? It can be pretty rough country if you're not familiar with it. My men will manage all right. It's what they're trained for. I just thought it might save you some time. Sergeant Bellis' crime is against the Army. It's our responsibility to apprehend him. Good day. Good. A fellow like that really makes you want to run out and join the army, doesn't he? Well, you still have a ranch to run. I suggest you run it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Do the whiskey. Here, try this. How is she? When your fever broke, I told her to get some rest. She's a good woman. Nanata's my wife. Well, then you owe it to her to tell me what's going on. Let's just leave it the way it is, boy. No, Samuel, no. You cannot leave it the way it is. This one has saved your life. He's brought a horse, a chance for us. You owe him the truth. If you do not speak, I will. There's no shame in speaking the truth. All right, all right. 
But you know one thing. You sign on, it's for the duration. This outfit can't afford no short timer. Cowardice in the face of the enemy, that's uh, not a very pretty charge. We lost seven men at Claymore Wells. Someone had to pay. And I had refused to obey an order. You were right. Small patrol of men with single shot weapons don't stand a chance against these. Only four of us made it back to the fort. Under the circumstances, Lieutenant Jameson was willing to reconsider the insubordination. But the captain wasn't. Only an insane man would believe the Indians was equipped with Henry's. So Captain Arnold decided it wasn't superior firepower that affected my judgment, but cowardice. The lieutenant, he tried to help Samuel. It was he who opened the stockade that night. Jameson helped him escape? And don't ask me to explain it. He had the notion that together we could prove what had happened. So you ran from a court martial. These stripes belong to me. I earned them. I never shamed them. Lieutenant Jameson said we could save them. It was the only chance I had. Well, where is he? The lieutenant is dead. He'll probably lay that on my doorstep, too. The same rifle that hit me hit him two or three times when he was running from the stockade. Where did you get these? Lieutenant Jameson left them with Nanata. Check it. No markings, no trademark. But it's a Henry inside and out. Did he tell her where he got him? No, no chance of that. But he did leave me a name. Latham. And Virginia City. Latham, we had a... We had a gunsmith by that name. But he left some time ago. But that can't be. He's got it marked right here on the map. <laughs> Sarge, you don't know this area very well, do you? No, sir. Well, that little circle includes... Ten sections of the roughest country in Nevada. There's absolutely nothing there, except some old worked-out silver claims. There's got to be something there. A sheen shop or a place where they make these things. I've got to find that place. Well, maybe you don't. Sorry, there happen to be some very good people around here. And one of them happens to be the sheriff. Now, if you think you can set a horse... Look, boy. You ain't thinking I'm turning myself in. If you want those stripes back, it's the only way. No, it ain't the only way. You're forgetting one thing. My trouble ain't with your sheriff. It's with the army. They didn't believe me the last time. But you got the rifles. Isn't that enough? Lieutenant Jameson didn't think so. It is true. We cannot go back until we have some proof. When you get proof, then what? The army is his life. He must go back. All right. I'm going with you. Just like that, you cut yourself in, huh? Well, I got to. You're my prisoner. I'm your prisoner? Ain't you forgetting who's holding this gun? You've got more brass than a colonel's cuspidor. So you're back in plenty of time. Still some daylight left. No good to carry your mount home. We'll keep the same pace tomorrow and walk the next day. No luck, huh? No. Well, we rode today, a jackrabbit would have to hunt for company. Uh, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, sir. I'll need five fresh remounts in the morning. I trust you can provide them. Of course. Yes. Good. Well, Captain, may I have a word with you? Yes, what is it? Captain, are you satisfied with everything we've been doing for you? Quite all right. And can you please tell me why you... Act as if I were your enemy. Enemy? Yes, sir. That's a strong word. Well, it's a valid one, just the same, though, isn't it? Mr. Cartwright, you have to remember I'm a soldier. You and I see things differently. Yes, it's true enough. It's not only because you're in uniform and I'm not. 
And it's not only me. You seem to resent all civilians. Oh, but you forget. It's wealthy, influential citizens like you who pay my salary, buy my clothes, put a roof over my head. I couldn't resent you. You support me. We support the government. The government supports you, sir. Yes. It does, doesn't it? But not quite the same style. Good day. Let's hand up this wash. Give these horses a rest? Look, recruit, I know horses. If it's a shoulder of mine you're worried about, you can forget it. It's recruit now, huh? Is that a rank uh, higher or lower than boy? <laughs> Depends on what outfit you're in. <laughs> Want to get down, pretty dark? Sorry? This, um... Outfit, turn out the Henrys. How big a place do they need? Oh, one large building, or two or three small ones. They'll need a forge, a lathe. You still got the map? Samuel! to watch them. It'll be a little tougher from here on, though. They're bound to know we need feed and water. It's the first thing they'll cut off. And sooner or later, they'll move in and find our tracks. Yep. Well, we better get moving. We sure ain't looking for mine shacks, either. What they need is a building big enough with a floor strong enough to support that machine. You got any ideas? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, there was a place like that. It was uh, south of Garner Falls. A man named Crawford there sold machinery to the mines until they played out. Recruit? You just might do. Thanks. <laughs> Last time here, there was a fire there. We may find another menagerie. I guess I could get you the sign for this. All right. What do you have, six bales there? Yeah. They're gonna need it tonight. Captain drives the animals as hard as he does the men. Pretty hard man, huh? Yeah, the way he's pushing, he's gonna have them shooting at shadows for long. Of course, I guess most of the troopers would just as leave do that if it comes to firing on the sergeant. You mean Bellis? I, I thought he was a deserter, a killer. Yeah, that's what they say. There's plenty of troopers that'd take a bullet for that man. Some of them have. Bill, uh, thank you kindly. My pleasure. Take care. Oh, where are you off to? Thanks, Ray. I, uh... I just thought I'd go on out and help Canning with the strays a little bit, keep him out of trouble, you know. Oh, you volunteered to round up strays? Uh, no, to be honest with you, I'm volunteering to get away from Captain Arnholz. He's not exactly a barrel of laughs, you know. No, that's a fact. Oh, he's a bitter man, isn't he? Yeah, what's he so bitter about? Well, Joe, his army career hasn't been exactly spectacular. In command either comes to a man and passes him by, and it must have passed him by an awfully long time ago. Yeah, well, if it's all right with you until he leaves, I'd, I'd kind of like to stay over the hill. Yeah, you're fine. Thanks, bud. Take it easy. Right.
Captain. There ain't no sign up ahead. A man can't cross this country without leaving his mark. All right. Then we'll turn east, work our way back to the Ponderosa. But, sir, if he'd have moved east, we should have cut his trail by now. You heard my orders, Corporal. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. and work our way down there. Sorry, Samuel. You don't need to be in another. You just saved your Sam a lot of trouble. I was just coming to look for you fellas. You found us. Assemble a Henry in three minutes, blindfolded. And this rifle you say led you to seek us out? Took it off of Shoshone. I figured it'd be my ticket. You see, ordinance is all I know. It ain't often a job presents itself to an unemployed sergeant. Deserter, you mean? I don't like it, Mr. Latham. I smell like trouble. Would I bring her if I was looking for trouble? Yes. That makes some sense. What about him? Stockade sells empty quick when the doors open. You don't have to worry. He's a good man. All right. You're right about one thing. We do need good ordnance men, but we insist on the strictest security. Do that and do your job, and you'll leave here rich men. We do no regulation. You don't have to worry about that. I won't. However, mine is not the last say in the matter. Until you're cleared by my partner, we can't let you do anything too important. Then. I'll take your matches, flints, tobacco, anything that burns. A uh, precaution, you understand. Well, what about her? She goes with me. 
For now, she's my hand. All right. Later, we can find something in the kitchen for her. Come on, this way. All right, hold it. Inside. Somebody here in a minute to show you what to do. do as good as that. You've got to treat Wood tender, like a woman. Mm. But not in now, she can probably turn out enough for both of us. Well, that's as crooked as a dog's hind leg. Well, I didn't intend to make this my life's work, you know. Sometimes Samuel is more loud than helpful. Yeah. Here. I'll show you. Feeling I'm gonna have plenty of time to learn. You got any ideas how we're gonna get out of here now that we're in? Just take it easy, recruit. As long as they're convinced I'm who I say, we're all right. First, we'll meet their partner. Then we'll turn in our resignation. Well, that last resignation you turned in was mighty close. Another? The recruit needs convincing. Well, that's what I call conservation of firepower. It's tactics that's important, recruit. Just cut across tracks, headed toward Geiner Falls. Looks like two, maybe three horses. It could be that... I think my orders said you were to work north and further east. Seems your sergeant's insubordination has left its seed in all of you. No, sir. Then I'll give you a chance to prove that. You may take the patrol, Corporal. Your orders? Sweep north and east, sir. Very good, Corporal. Yes, sir. Forward! Oh! You the one called Candy? It's him. Friend of yours showed up outside looking for you, Brandon. Lizzie, never seen the likes of him before, did you? Now, if you think we led him here, you're dead wrong.
just knew I was going to get a chance at you. expert had it in his sleeve. He was lying? Well, I'll let you figure that out. I say we should get rid of them now. You know that I can't take responsibility for murder. Well, then you better get the man who can. All our next ride on this. What are you saying? This is the man the army's looking for? Right. You know, I know it's hard to believe, but Sergeant Bellis and I are working together. It was hard to believe is putting it mildly. Now, according to those charges, he's done everything but burn down the White House, including murder. Those charges were false. That's the truth, Joe. Thank you. All right. All right I'll take your word for it. Okay, after stumbling into this place, I believe almost anything. You got any bright ideas on how we're going to get out of here? We did. Captain Arnold must be moving his troops this way if our trail was clear enough for you to find us. From what I could see of Arnold's tracks, he's way, way east of here. I'm sorry, recruit. I'd give a furlough in New Orleans to have that little gun back. Uh, you still have those two bullets, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Sergeant, what does a manual say when your first plan of strategy fails? What are you driving at? Improvise, Sergeant. Improvise. Improvise. You're sure this is gonna work, eh? If you don't, I'll give you your money back. Thanks a lot. Better if it wasn't for those Henrys out there. These rifles are an another responsibility. Fret too much, Latham. Trouble anticipated is trouble solved. Come on. Somebody's coming this way. Captain. Sir, you can't imagine how glad I am to see you. We're going by your tracks. I never. F Sorry, sir. They got you too. Take these people outside and shoot them. I don't understand. I do. The captain's the man they've been waiting for. The missing partner. Take him outside. Let's get this over with. You gonna kill all of them? Yes. All but Bellis will be the innocent victims of a deserter. A deserter I was forced to kill when he would not surrender. <laughs>
make of that, Trooper? Corporal, that could be gunfire. But that's worse. We've already come further than the captain said. I don't hear you, Trooper. Forward, ho! Get out of the way! Into custody. Why? Bellis! You're a deserter and a traitor! You think these men will listen to you? Corporal, arrest that man! Wait a minute, Henderson. Come on, I want to show you something. Take a look at this. The same gun that cut down our men at Claymore Wells. You can find some more of them just like it in that building. Anderson, I gave you an order. And I'm giving you one, Captain. Lay down your gun and come peaceably back to the post. Let them decide who's guilty. Henderson, carry out your orders. Ellis, can you prove what you just said? I've got enough witnesses to hang him. All right, Captain. Lay down your gun like the sergeant said. This is mutiny. You'll either hang or spend the rest of your life at hard labor. I'll take that chance, Captain. Troopers, disarm the Captain. More of them around here help me. Better get them too. You betcha, Sarge. Sarge? You have the judge advocate contact us here at the Ponderosa. And we'll be there to testify whenever you need us. That I will do. Thank you, Trooper. Oh, it's Trooper now, huh? To the best I ever had beside me. Yeah, well, I think the least he can do is give us a little raise in rank. After all, he's the one who's going to get the medal, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you boys don't know my colonel. For every regulation I broke, I'll bend and pick, walk and tote, run and sweat. I thought you loved the Army. Well, I do, but it's kind of like a good woman. Couldn't love them an awful lot. But it ain't all honeymoon. <laughs> See you, troopers. Take Good it. luck, sir. <laughs> well, I think we better report, too. Report to who? The General Cartwright. 
I'm sure he had a little running and sweating for us to do, too. Yeah, I'll bet he does. <laughs> Thank you.